This is a pod. A pod about dogs. Hey everyone, welcome to the Healthy Dog Pod. It's Sophie and Ian as always. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about Christmas time and Christmas time. <laughs> The Christmas As special. As you can see, where I'm wearing um, plum puddings, sparkly plum puddings. And this is a good time to say as well. This is the first episode we've recorded with a camera. Yeah. So the Christmas special <laughs> with the camera. Both got Christmas jumpers on. Yeah. Ian's so. got Drake Hotline Bling doing the Hotline Bling. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I have my bling. Oh wow, that is so awkward. That's, <laughs> I mean, uh, the cr- Christmas special made me dance on camera. This never happens without wow. the camera. So I oh, know Ian does not dance. Oh, that's just brilliant start. We so. have footage. Yeah. Wow, this is... <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to do a Christmas special and mainly focus on the classic: everyone buying a puppy as a Christmas present. Yeah, a few little uh, things to chat about. You know, it is that time of year where, you know, typically people get puppies and they just don't really think about it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, obviously, some people do, and that's great, but it's not one of those things that, you know, people should be doing on a whim. And yet, it's the time of year where people classically do that. Yeah, and I think you have to think about if you're buying it for someone else, can they look after it? Do they have the time? Do they have the money to look after it? Do they have the patience? You know, are they able to train it as well? I think buying a gift, a dog or any animal as a gift is a big risk, it I is. think. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it is that time of year as well where, you know, if you've got kids that are off school, you've got more time when you're, well, more time with the family, more time at home. It could be a little bit deceptive because well it's not real life kids are going to go back to school and we see people go like yeah we're going to get a dog we're going to spend every living minute of it in the first few weeks of its life and that's great but until it's got no coping skills for being left alone at the end of the christmas holidays and then you have to go back to work and then your dog's crying and barking and maybe has separation anxiety and you go what what's happening I remember when Tracy Irons from AVBS, she goes, uh, she's delivering this presentation once. She's talking about her son who went out and bought a little dog um, on a whim. And she's like, should have bought a pair of Ugg boots. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> like, it's true though. It's yeah. pretty accurate. Um, but yeah, no, it is some, what we're getting at is, guys, is that it is something that, you know, if you're going to bring a dog into your life, it is a commitment. And we've talked about this in various ways formats before when we're talking about rescues and when we're talking about training and the commitment of that but yeah it is a full-on commitment and you're bringing a living thing into your life and not something that um should be taken lightly so things to look out for when you're buying a puppy and whether it be from a breeder or a rescue or whatever is i mean we've said this before think about what it is you want from bringing a dog into your life I've banged on about it before, how I wanted a pub dog that just sat next to me. And so I got an older dog and it's the best decision ever made. But um, no, there's people out there that different dogs for different people and there is a dog for everybody. But you really got to think about, um, you know, the temperament of the dog and the behavior of the dog, not just what it looks like, because that's where it can go really wrong. I think that's the hard thing, especially with TV these days and... Instagram and Facebook, you see these dogs that are beautifully well trained, you know, more your Kelpies and your colleagues and all that. And you think, oh, I'm going to get that because they always look like they're well trained. Yeah. Like pre, like, pre, pre-trained dogs would be lovely though, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would be lovely. <laughs> R- Robo dog comes to your door. Fantastic. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Um, but... but you have to really look at and understand what they were bred for and what their needs are. Yeah. Yeah. The, the mental needs of the dog um and the physical needs of course but um you know take the kelpie he's a working dog you know that that dog um physically couldn't go for for a while but that's because his brain doesn't switch off and his brain's probably just running in overdrive all the time so you know kelpies they're not great for those people that are going to go to work all day and just leave their dog alone um and same with herd like any herding breed any gun dog breed 
high high amounts of energy, like high activity, um, and they need a lot of mental stimulation through interaction and enrichment. Um, so yeah, go and get a dog that is low energy if that's what you your lifestyle uh, allows for and you end up with a lot less problems in the long oh, yeah. run. You know, you don't want that good looking dog that you don't want to be in the presence of because you hate him because he's tearing up your house. You don't, like, it doesn't matter how pretty he is, you're just like, dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. I think everyone looks at puppies and go, oh, puppies are so easy. Puppies will be easy. But it's like, okay, you have to toilet train them. They're going to tear stuff. They're yeah. going to nip you. The, you know, they need to be walked. They need to be mentally stimulated. Like there's so much more to owning a puppy. And I say to people, when I go sit a puppy, I go, wow, I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Like, go to your friend's house. Go spend a day with them. Go sit a puppy for a day. It's a hell of a lot of work. And I remember the last puppy that I sat, I um, was sitting on it with the couch and I was playing with it. And then we both ended up going to sleep like in the middle of the day because I was so tired. <laughs> it's day. like, it's so much work and you just, you forget. So if you're thinking about buying a puppy, you know. We're not trying to discourage anybody. No, definitely not. We're just not. asking you to take it seriously before yeah, you do. Yeah, and it's a big commitment. And, and I think these days people think dogs are disposable. And they can just, like, don't get me wrong, there's some circumstances where they may need to give up the dog or um, something happens. But people just put in the too hard basket sometimes and go, oh, I'm going to get rid of this dog, it's too hard. Yeah, and that's the risk. That's the risk when you, uh, when you get a puppy for somebody else as a gift. You probably don't know, re realistically, what point they're at, whether they can take something that big on into their life. Um, don't get one for your kids either. That shits me. Um, yeah. <laughs> it does though, because yeah, I mean, every parent, they like, we'll, sit, we'll get there and uh, every consult I go to, they're like, yeah, I've got the dog for the kids, but of course I did the work. Yeah. Every parent says that. It's not, it's, I don't really know how you made that mistake still. Um, you, like, you're the parent, you're going to do the work. Um, the kids aren't going to walk it. Pro kids probably shouldn't be if it's a big dog like you know we see kids get pulled over by big dogs and things like that and sure like mature kids but even then you know they're probably doing the hscs they, yeah. they do it they've got other commitments they're going to go out and see their friends they, it's just not realistic so if you don't want the dog but your kids do get a goldfish <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit harsh but that's the dog that suffers and you and your kids won't. Your kids might get yelled at a bit, I suppose. Yeah. For like not picking up the shit in the garden. But it's, yeah, don't, just be sensible. Don't, don't bring something into your life that you're not ready for. It is that time of year, though, like we said earlier, where, you know, people are home. Um, there's gifts on the floor. They're going to get destroyed. There's Christmas trees out. They're going to get destroyed. And puppies chew. Yeah. And it's not, it's not being naughty. He's uh, chewing feels good. For the dog it's a com really really common uh comfort behavior that a dog will do when it wants to make itself feel better yeah um natural behavior every single puppy will choose something like whether it's convenient to you or not is irrelevant to the puppy yeah your so, hand <laughs> your hand your christmas tree your, your slippers shoes, yeah your bags all of that stuff it's um really important that when you do bring that puppy in if you do to have appropriate things to chew um in place i know when i got um my first puppy um two days before i brought him in um i went round the house and went round like all the edges i've got a camera I can actually explain what an edge is it's not like <laughs> this is weird I'm not used to it all, these but, like, all the edges <laughs> and like just put chewing deterrent on yeah and so I went around the apartment and went, right, okay, he's not gonna, he could destroy that, he could destroy that, he could destroy that, he could definitely destroy that, remove that, remove that, chewing deterrent, yeah, and then left the different textures out. So something soft, something rubbery, something really hard, a couple of natural things, rope toy as well, like just some, but four or five, not millions of items at Christmas, you know, again, Christmas, Christmas toys going everywhere. Puppy's got to differentiate between what it can chew and 
what it shouldn't. Yeah. What we would like it not to, not what it shouldn't. Um, and yeah, and then we make it really clear and obvious for the puppy. But um, of course, I've trained dogs for a living. I knew to do that. Yeah. This is me telling you as a dog trainer, go and do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think in puppy school as well, in the first session, we always go through puppy proofing the house. Yeah. So, you know, locking cupboards with chemicals and dangling wires and poisonous plants, Put up a poisonous fence. food, yeah, um, puppy gates, um, you know, just going around the house going, what can my dog get its teeth on? Yeah, because yeah. it will. Let me say we will. And um, yeah, layout as well. You know, the the dog sees, the dog does see the world very differently to you and me because we, we know what all of this shit in our life is. Like it's a keyboard, it's a table, it's a chair. They're human names on objects at the end of the day. And the dog sees it as what's its texture? What's it, can, what's it, what feedback do I get when I engage with it? And if it's springy, if it's hard, if it's fun, if it's soft, dog's just like, great. This solves, this, this, <laughs> this serves a purpose. <laughs> yeah. But not only that, um, say, for example, the layout of the house. So we see, we see those objects, they see space. So in this room, you know, we've got the, around the table, you've got um, a thoroughfare, basically, where people walk. And then under the table, you've got a dead spot. And the dog's going to see that as a place of activity and a place where it's quiet and it can rest. And so if you think about your house, you know, don't put the dog bed in the thoroughfare. Yeah. It's just, it's not going to sleep. Put, give the dog a reason to remove itself off to one side in the corner so it can go off and have a rest. And how often do you say that? Uh, all the time. Yeah. Like, why, why do you have this dog bed here? <laughs> that you're walking past, the dog's like, oh, trying to sleep. Oh. Well, they go, oh, my dog wanted to lay there. I'm like, your dog wanted to stay busy and um, your, dog, your dog wanted to remain vigilant. Um, it needs to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like, it wanted to be, live by, uh, be by the front door. I'm like, oh, come on, mate. Like, your dog makes terrible decisions. It's a dog. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, in a human world, I mean, like, it's going to do what it can to uh, stay involved. That doesn't mean it's wise. Yeah. And, you know, like, we've said this so many times, the dog sleep deprivation is massive. Yeah. Uh, puppies need 20 hours a day. Like, it's only meant to be awake four hours. Like, this, yeah. that new little puppy, his brain is developing so much in its sleep. Um, it's only meant to be awake for four hours. So when you get that puppy and you bring it home for Christmas, and that's like, great. By the time it's done, like, got it out, said hello, it's cooked. Let it sleep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, how many people do that? Like, they're not, this is, this is why we're doing this, is because, like, it's really important to, yes, it's exciting, but it still needs to be taken seriously because yeah. that puppy's development is really important. Those first few weeks that you bring it in, um, there is socialization period. That's where the synapses in the brain are like, I think it's double what they are of a normal, like of an adult dog. Um, and so it's learning all the time and its brain's a sponge in that moment. Don't treat it, don't, don't get it all hyper it, every yeah. single second of every single day. Um, the other thing was uh, around that time of year is all the food. Like it's a good, good, probably good opportunity to talk about you know, food. food and what not to feed your dog. Yeah, so you probably got all these Christmas treats and pastries and everything like that on the Christmas table. <laughs> Try not to feed your dog over that. <laughs> um, no, there's, yeah. there's some basics, isn't there? Like uh, this is what we, you know, we'll put a list up actually of what not yeah. to feed your dog. But it's good idea. onions, garlic, um, grapes. You know. Grapes is a massive one. Yeah, grapes. Yeah. Um, avocado, Aussie favourite. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Aussie, I, I think... Uh, Alcohol. What, what? You mean I can't get my dog drunk? <laughs> <laughs> no, Christmas alcohol. <laughs> and a lot of like Christmas puddings as well have alcohol in it. I feel really bad. I used to give uh, Lola my first Spaniel a um, little bit of Guinness. <laughs> this is where the camera should have been on your face. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but um it was just like yeah when i was when i was young very young um old enough to drink guinness eh? um we yeah we'd drop a little bit of guinness in, in a bowl and she'd love it 
Uh, we were like, it's full of iron. It's good for her. Shit. Uh, like, yes. In hindsight, probably not the best thing to do. Yeah. No. <laughs> And I think it's so tempting when you're all around the dinner table and, you know, you know, want to throw down a few scraps and, you know, like meat and stuff like that and some veggies are fine, but just steer clear from, you know, the pastries and the sugary stuff. Yeah, be careful. Like if you've got onion gravy, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, bones. We, no cooked bones. Yeah. At all. No, what do they do? It's a splinter. Splinter and they can pierce the esophagus. So definitely no cooked bones. Um, yeah, it's just, it's so dangerous. I've seen so many cases of bones piercing esophaguses. Yeah. <sighs> and, and even just like little bones, like the chicken and the turkey and all of that, um, they're just smaller. They can, they're easy to get lodged in the windpipe. Yeah. Even on a, without thinking, I mean, you want to give your dog a bone that is appropriately sized for your dog. Yeah. Those holidays, it's where it's where your brain melts and just switches off because you're not at work and it's great and everything, but that's where you do make stupid ass decisions and you're like, yeah. oh yeah, just do that. I wouldn't do it any other time of the year, but I'm not thinking straight. So you end up feeding him basically <laughs> something that is really going to be quite dangerous without, I don't know, it's innocent, but it is the time of year where we all are a little bit stupid. I am. So I just wanted to pop in a story that I just thought of about uh, family friend Rhonda. Um, she got given a puppy for Christmas and it's a border collie, Ziggy. And she did not want a puppy <laughs> for Christmas. <laughs> it was a rescue as well. I'm pretty sure it was Christmas or a birthday, regardless anyway. Um, and she got given it and she was like, oh... I'm not sure what to do. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting a puppy in my life. You know, she's a lot older now and she wanted to travel and, you know, now you've got that commitment in your life. Uh, you need to make sure you're looking after that dog first. So, um, she just received it and I was in Melbourne and we sat down at the table and she's like, can I just ask you a few questions? I'm, I'm not sure what, what I'm doing. And I spoke to her for about two or three hours, I think. Like we had a massive conversation and um, it was really great because she was saying exactly what you said before about, you know, she had the bed, maybe in a thoroughfare. And I said, you need somewhere dark where it can sleep, maybe a kennel or, you know, in a corner. She had it in the lounge room sleeping and he wasn't sleeping. He had red eyes and just wasn't getting enough sleep. Um, That's just onto that real quick. Sorry, I don't want to take you too far off your story. But if your dog has got like red eyes where they're meant to be white your dog's exhausted yeah or something else is wrong like or you're a really heavy smoker or something <laughs> <laughs> like it's not normal no and, right. that, and that's what i said to her i was like you know his eyes red and she's like yeah said, how did you know that i was like i can tell by you just telling me that he's not sleeping he needs somewhere where he can sleep so she got him a kennel and she um put him in the room for the starters and kept him in the kennel so he could sleep. Then I spoke about mental stimulation and, you know, maybe scatter feeding and um, some games she can play with him. And also he had a bit of separation issues. So she was struggling leaving the house. So I just ran through, you know, what you can do um, to help her leave the house and for him to be okay. And this was really tough for her because, you know, she didn't, not that she didn't want the dog. She didn't sign up for it. Yeah, she didn't sign up for it and she got given it. And then it's a massive commitment in her life and she wasn't really sure what to do. And then she, I remember I got a text from her like about a month later and she was just like, thank you so much. Like, I really appreciate your time and the chat we had because it's totally changed him. I put in the things you said in place and... Now, you know, I can leave the house and I know he's going to be okay. And I'm giving him mental stimulation and he's sleeping. He doesn't have red eyes anymore. And just those little things she put in place really helped because she was at that point where she was stressing out because she's like, I've got this dog in my life. What, what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. Like so. it's not, I mean, it's even worse when it's not expected. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. She's like, like... Change plans. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, dogs live 10 years plus, give or take, 
and you have to think that that's the commitment in your life now. Paul Roberts. <laughs> hey, just uh, by the way, don't, I was going to get you, um, just going to get you a box of chocolates, um, but instead bought you a... Um, living thing. A living thing that you've got to look after for the next, I don't know, what, 15 years. Don't worry about it. Uh, you're, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the thing, even for me with my rabbit, you know, my partner bought me a rabbit and... They're seven to ten years. Yeah, I love that. He's like, yeah, two years, mate. You got this. <laughs> he thought it was two to three years. And I'm like, it's seven to ten. This is a commitment. And, you know, we've changed our lives for him. And But we've also made sure... We've also... <laughs> oh, sure. We've also made sure that he's able to be, you know, at other people's houses and he's fine with other people coming in the house because when we go away, then we can have people look after him. You set him up. You, you, you got to set the dog up for, um, or the rabbit, um, <laughs> to be able to cope with your lifestyle. You know, we talk a lot about meeting the dog's needs, um, which is uh, essential, but at the same time, it's got to be fair. You've got to, you've got to set yourself up for a win and leaving the dog alone creating healthy degrees of separation is well it's, it's in the title healthy um it's healthy for you and it's healthy for the dog um when you're when you're in your dog's presence whether you like it or not you're a stimulant you're busy you'll move you changes in the environment that we would not even perceive as a change getting up and getting a glass of water anything any sort of movement and any sort of noise adds stimulation to their environment and if your dog is surrounded by stimulation 24 hours a day because you want to be around your dog more, which typically happens a lot over the holidays, um, means that your dog's brain never turns off. And it's really important to turn off. Even if you've got um, two dogs, healthy degrees of separation from one another is really important in my opinion. Like, nobody wants to be surrounded by anybody for 24 hours a day. It drive you mental. <laughs> Um, it would though, wouldn't it? Hell it's like, yeah. It's like brothers, I, I've fought more with brother my brother sisters, yeah. than anyone else on this earth. Yeah. And I love it more than anyone else on this earth. But, the, um, you know, there, there is times when you need to go and do your own thing. Walk your dog separately. Go and take the kids out without the dog. Go and take the dog out without the kids. Yeah. Setting time aside where they're actually able to be alone with it, with one-on-one -on -one for each family member. And... Um, but that alone time, and you talked earlier about the sleep, you know, when you are, and it goes ties in with the stimulation as well. If, if you're around your dog all the time, uh, it's constantly surrounded by stimulation. It doesn't sleep properly. And people get a little bit um, put out, I think. They're like, or not put out. What's the word? They, they get uncomfortable with leaving their dog alone. Yeah. Um, set up the environment. We talked about puppy proofing. Set up an environment where it can't destroy anything. And you don't have to worry about that. But... Set up an environment where it can actually sleep and rest. Um, they're like, oh, I left my dog alone, so I left it with a ball chucker. I'm like, you fucking idiot. Like, you, you get home and your dog hasn't slept because you've left it basically surrounded by stimulants again. Um, you want your dog to sleep. Yeah. If it, you leave it some enrichment that, like, it can chew, that's static, like, as in st static as in it doesn't move. Um, but so it's basically, it can entertain it by chewing and relaxing rather than just like it's on pingers and trying to get the next thing. Yeah. Um, because you want to get home to a well-rested dog. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so it all ties in together. And, th and this is something we see all the time. By the end of school holidays, whether it be a two-week period or the big one in the summer holidays, we're getting phone calls. My dog is behaving um, abnormally for whatever reason, whether it be aggression or restlessness, digging, chewing. All of them are basically the dog communicating, I'm exhausted, lads, go back to work. And um, yeah. it's just shattered. Um, and this is something that if we can prepare for, you set yourself up, uh, you're there. You know, it's a potentially, if you're aware of all this, you are there more. So you can supervise more you can put them in the other room and let them rest them while you're home. Like a toddler goes down for a nap. I had a consultation on Saturday, building the relationship up with the baby, between the dog and the baby. And um, mid-consultation, the mum really obviously could see that her daughter was absolutely shattered. So I took it in the other room and put it, put it down for a nap. We don't, we don't think twice about it with a human, like a little human baby. We don't think twice about it. Of course, it's, it's tired. 
go and put it on that. Puppy, do the opposite. Yeah. Go and keep it so busy. So true, yeah. So. It'll it, be bored if we don't. Yeah, yeah. They're know, really yeah. worried about the dog being bored. bored. Um, yeah. So am I, if like, but in in a lot of instances, but the thing is, I think we see this a lot. When the, when the dog gets agitated, it moves or it chews. And so the different, there, that is a dog, remember, I didn't use the word bored on purpose because it is agitated. It's mm. got lots of shit going on in its life. It's been awake for two or three hours without having a rest and it's now agitated. But when we see a dog moving or when we see a dog chewing or digging, we don't think agitated. We don't think, uh, we think energetic or we think bored. And so our brain, our human brain goes, oh shit, I've got to run that dog. He's got loads of energy. Yeah. It's not, it's knackered, mate. Like, let him sleep. Put him in the other room. And then they're like, oh, he doesn't know how to settle. No, because you've never taught him. Yeah. So it's, if you start off with, yes, I know he's probably going to attend, he's probably going to cry for a bit of attention. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not causing panic, that's not a problem. Let him learn via consequences that he d attention seeking doesn't always get him attention. Otherwise you end up with a brat. I think that's where people get confused. They see the dog crying or whimpering and they go, he's got separation anxiety. Like, no, he's just a bit uncomfortable right now. And he just wants you to come back to him. And it's kind of like when you think about when a baby's crying, you know, you let them cry it out. If you go back to them, you're almost rewarding that behavior. And then they go, okay, every time I cry, you come back to me. I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. Like it is so, so, so important to learn the difference in cries yeah. because if your dog is panicking you need to go and look after it yeah but if the dog is sitting there and going i don't i don't really know how to say so i've never dropped i've never dropped my guard in this environment before so i don't know how so he doesn't he's got to learn by consequences that he can you've set it up you've put him in this space where nothing can go wrong <laughs> like nothing can go wrong exactly yeah and so he's going to before he learns that he can stop and drop his guard and relax he's going to try not to he's going to wonder why he's in there and that's a, normal that's normal yeah but if he's in the meantime he's gonna he's gonna give it a little and like give, sorry oh, what i know i was on camera mate i was on camera oh, like everyone's got it so <laughs> I'm not sure I like these cameras. Um, I'm not sure I like these cameras. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know. It's gone all over the place. Yeah. Good old. But one minute I'm Aussie, the next minute I'm, I'm English. Oh, yeah, it's all over the shop. <laughs> um, um, now, what was I saying? So, yeah, he's going to attention seek. He's going to he's going to try and make himself comfortable in a moment where he's uncomfortable. He, this is where, as a dog owner, you, you've got to use your best judgment. Um, like a parent, like I know damn well he's okay, whether I go back to him or not, because I've set my environment up well. Um, and I also know that if I keep him awake, I'm going to have a lot more problems than if he sleeps. So, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes you have to let your dog learn that attention seeking isn't always going to work. You don't want to create ever create a relationship uh, between... Well, we talk a lot about punishing and things like that. We don't want to create a relationship where we just bully a dog into it. Yeah. But one of the reasons why I think dominance theory came around was because people feel manipulated by their dog. So the dog barks and cries and we go back to it. And over yeah. time, everybody's sleep deprived and they feel like shit. And then they're like, oh God, I just can't do this anymore. Yeah. Because you didn't have a, didn't either. I don't know why, but there's probably many reasons. It probably made you uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. But makes you feel like you're a bad parent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and if you're unsure, that's why you have professional help, somebody yeah. that can come in and different teach you how to differentiate between yeah that dog's um, just sitting there going through his vocal range, seeing which one brings you back. Yeah. Um, and this one's panic. Go and help him, because yeah. there's a difference. And if you don't have the experience, and chances are you don't. Go and get help. Yeah. Um, it can go a long, long way to getting everything right. Sleep. Panicking, you will see them trying their absolute hardest to get out. I actually had an email not long ago where this dog was, his claws were bleeding and his nose was bleeding because he was trying to get out 
Yeah, it's not normal. Yeah, or they'll do behaviours, you know, sometimes chasing their tail, spinning. Um, you can hear it in their voice Barking, as well. yeah. Like, it's desperate. It's like a scream almost, isn't but, it? Yeah. You know, if you get to a point where you're not, where you're not feeling pain, um, that's not normal. That's, yeah. that's a dog not, no longer sitting there with the thought out process of, if I try this, this might work. You've just got frantic desperation. Yeah. And that's where, like, it should never get that bad. No. Um, you will see, if your dog has got a, uh, has learned in the past that attention seeking will draw your attention, uh, get attention, um, you will see an extinction burst, which is where the behavior will get stronger before it goes extinct. So for example, where normally, you know, a little eye glance at you makes it, makes you go, oh, uh, or if it just whimpers a little bit, you, you normally stand up and things like that. When it's not, when that's not working, your dog doesn't magically learn, oh, I'm going to sleep then. Your dog goes, I'm going to try that same behavior louder and for longer. Um, that's still not panic at the, until it's panic. Yeah. You know, it's... That, it's just trying a little harder. So, and that's called an extinction burst, which again is very normal. And that's, that's often where people fall down. They're, it goes know. to like this high mm. of the extinction burst and then they go, I give up. Yeah. And then they go back to the dog and then it starts all over again. Yeah. You almost need to reach that top point and then it comes down. Yeah. And this is where if you set, oh shit, got the camera wrong. <laughs> um, doesn't matter. Um, this where set the environment up. People go, oh, he's scratching the doors. That's because you, oh yeah, dogs do that. Yeah. Don't. That's where setting up the environment is really important. So if you don't want him chewing your door frame and you don't want him scratching your doors, put up, put up so like I've seen people put up like a piece of acrylic so that when it scratches, it doesn't yeah. do any damage. Or the pen. Yeah. Use a, uh, ba use a baby door. gate or yeah. a pen or yeah. many different ways around uh, around behaviour. Like, as in, like, environment, um, managing the environment, words. And it's, yeah, it's just, a, it's lots and lots of different ways around it. Don't just give up. Because as soon yeah. as you've got a dog that has learnt to get attention through barking and howling, especially when more and more apartment live in, you piss off your neighbours, you end up trapped, you end up with sleep deprivation, you, you end up with a world of problems. And... You know, I, my dog, at first, even he was uh, nine, ten years old, eight years old, who knows. But when I brought him in, I used a crate at first. Yeah. So that he could learn to sleep when he needed to sleep. He was in recovery mode. But true, uh, too, like, it was a healthy degree of separation. I brought him into my life, and he was always going to get clingy. But I need him also to be self-sufficient so that I can go to work on Thursdays and be out. Um, it's healthy degrees of separation. Yeah, and I think that's what, if you are getting a dog, it's hard because you want to spend every hour with it, every day with it. You know, it's a new puppy, but you also yeah. need to leave the house <laughs> because when you go back to work, that's when all the issues start happening. Like, I need to leave for work for eight hours, but you just spent two week, two three weeks with it every single day. <laughs> Teaching it no coping skills. Yeah. Um, and not only that, like, Puppies, puppies are super cute, obviously, and <laughs> then all of a sudden you've got this 50 kilo dog that you can't, uh, that you can't leave alone. Um, you don't look at it quite in the same way yeah. quite as much. Like it's not that cute dog puppy anymore. It's this thing that's now controlling your life. Um, it's not its fault. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, you know, so don't get me wrong. Like, you know, we work with dogs all the time that, uh, -huh they've been dealt a bad hand genetically and they don't, they don't develop coping skills very easily, but they're not that common. You know, we, we work with the dogs where it's going wrong. There are more dogs out there with training problems and behavior issues. I've just got a bias because that's what I work with. Um, so yeah, no, you can set up healthy degrees of separation yeah. um, and not feed your dog crap like that's going to kill it um, over Christmas time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so if you are planning on getting a dog, please listen to this podcast <laughs> and listen to our advice or get a trainer in, you know, even before you're deciding what breed you want, what type of dog you want for your lifestyle. 
that's something we can do as well is help you actually choose what dog's good for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's something, um, that's something we set up on the website, um, earlier this year was something to actually, so that people can actually get in touch with us, even if it's over the phone, over Skype and have a conversation about, uh, before you get a dog, just ask us questions. Yeah. Like, or we'll ask you questions. Yeah. And we're basically just there to support you and help you. We can come around and puppy proof. I've had people ask me to come around and puppy proof before Same. they've even got the dog, which is so good. It really just set them up for a win. Um, and we people go, I think they get a little bit embarrassed. They're like, oh, can you come around? I don't have a dog yet. I'm like, oh, I wish everybody would do this. Yeah, I know. It's great. I love it. I remember I did that with a puppy. I came around and they didn't have the dog. And it was great because I could go around and be like, okay, you know, where would you like it? Where would you like it to go to the toilet? We can put its food here. You know, um, just looking around the house for any issues that wires or chemicals or anything like that. Yeah, it just set, sets everybody up for a win. Yeah. It's not that. Yeah, it does not nothing to be a... a uh, what's the word? There's nothing to be uh, embarrassed about being proactive and actually thinking about what you're doing. Yeah, and I think that's such a tough thing. People get really embarrassed to speak to us and tell us their issues. And, you know, we're here to help you. We're not judging you at all. We actually need to know all the facts. Tell us everything. I feel like sometimes people hide a few things because they're embarrassed. And mm. then when you get there, they're like, oh, actually, sometimes, you know, he does this. I'm like, that's fine. Just just let me know that like, I I'm not judging you. It's I'm trying normal. to help you. Dogs actually present in really normal dog behavior. Yeah. You got nothing to worry about. No. You know, as in like you nothing to be embarrassed about. No. Um, so don't ever be embarrassed if you're giving us a call or you know something's going wrong because that's what we're here to help you. Yeah. Like um one of the um best gifts I've seen somebody do is like uh their partner got a dog trainer to help them. Yeah, I've had that too. That yeah, it's nice. Yeah, he got there, and it's like it's actually something that he wanted to do. He's like, I, I thought I knew dogs, and I didn't. Um, I didn't. I couldn't actually get on top of this. I didn't know how, and his, it was really causing his partner stress. Um, and so he got us in to actually help that, and it was really nice. It, it was it was a really good. It was a much better gift than the, pu the getting a puppy itself. Yeah. Because um, that, I mean, this puppy was already in the, in its life, in her life. Um, but it wasn't going as planned. Yeah. And that's when it gets, I mean, we, nobody calls us when it's going well. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what we're saying. Like, if you get us in beforehand, yeah, we can hopefully set everybody up for a win long term. And yes, behavior is dynamic and it changes and there's life stages and all of that. Yeah. So yeah, you probably will need help down the line as well, but get you off to the best possible start doesn't it and gift us we're happy to be <laughs> gifted as trainers so um me and Ian play volleyball as well and one of our volleyball friends tom he actually i was a gift to his housemates for their dog oh. yeah so, <laughs> trainer <laughs> gift um yeah and it was really good and even he learned so much as well because he's in the house and they weren't sure of some behaviors that brumby was doing and I just ran through everything and did a consultation with them. And even walking him, they weren't able to walk him. Oh, they were, but he was nipping at them. They couldn't yeah. understand why. Um, Herd herding dog, doing normal herding behavior. Yeah. Yeah. So we just ran through everything. And yeah, it was awesome. And it was great. Yeah, it's the first time I've had training as a gift which I saw is Tom uh, walking Brumby the yeah. other week yeah, he did he have treats? yeah he was killing it oh, I'm so proud it was funny I love when I, I see him I was walking along um, along the front of Bondi and um, whenever I see somebody actually training their dog while walking it's really nice to see and I, I'll just sat back and just mind my own business but I can't help but notice it because it's not common most people are just oblivious yeah. and um, I was watching it watching this dog get trained and walked and everybody was really happy and this guy was just smiling and as i got close i realized it was tom <laughs> i mean i must have looked like a right weirdo because tom at this point had clocked me um and was like hello like, like waving and at which point i'm like oh hello in fact um <laughs> i've just been weirdly watching you and i know you um, <laughs> see that makes me so proud that it you know it's not even his dog he's the housemate and he took in the information that I said and yeah, that's just 
yeah. makes me smile. So. Yeah, and and the the holidays are a great time to uh, get a trainer in because we can. The chances are, with everybody off work and everybody off school, we can sit down with the whole family. Yeah, and you know, there's training. Um, the everybody, every individual, and also one of the things I love to do when it's like sitting down with uh, the family is figuring out what each individual in the family likes and dislikes. So um, actually asking questions, you know, along the lines of like, what is it about your dog? What's your favorite part of the dog? And the kids are, uh, everyone, the adults are the same, but like they'll always give you a different answer. So one of them maybe really likes it when they're playing training games. So one might like the walking and one might just like it when it's settled and relaxed and it's like a cuddle buddy. Um, listen to them because your kids are actually communicating like what it is they would like to do with the dog um and each part of that does play a role in the dog's life as well um and so you can strengthen their bond that way whereas if you start going uh, against the dog and against the kids and against the husband or against the wife in pushing them into shit that they don't want to do um you'll set the the person up to fail you know, yeah. that kid that doesn't want to walk the dog is probably nervous. It's probably uh, communicating. Um, there's a, well, not just nervous. So there's a few reasons, but it communi be, be communicating what, what they don't want to do and there'll be a reason. So it could be that oh, I get really nervous when it's off leaving the park or it could be I haven't got time because I'm studying. Yeah. It could be, it could be lazy. Yeah. But that means he just doesn't like the dog. And that's okay. You know, some kids... It's the, it's you, the adult brought the dog in. And if the kid genuinely doesn't like the dog, um, you know, as long as he's not being nasty. Yeah. Um, well, don't force, force it. Um, Makes it worse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you just end up breaking down relationships rather than building them. And they resent the dog almost as yeah. well. You don't need that. No. Yeah. So one other thing as well is... Um, when you go away over Christmas and you might have a dog or a puppy and you're looking for a sitter or a walker over yeah. Christmas. It's really common for families to leave over Christmas. Um, and it that, that because it is so common in Sydney, particularly, I mean, it, it, the bloody city entities, it's great. Um, but um, it's, uh, it, it's so important to get there early. Um, if you've got a special needs dog, <laughs> I, say, I say that because I work with them. Yeah. Um, but your dog, if your dog has got needs that, you know, say it's dog aggressive or human aggressive or needs medication or whatever, um, you've got to think far ahead. You know, you've got to book in really early. I know, that, I know that the best places, they book out about April. Um, yeah. So you've got to really think ahead um, and make sure that your dog is taken care of at a time when you're not going to be there because it will be uncomfortable for your dog with that not going on i mean there's other factors you know if you're going to leave your dog um with someone else in sydney if your dog's sensitive to fireworks don't send them into the city um, yeah i think that's a massive one that we forget is fireworks and a lot of dogs actually run away yeah. um especially if they don't know where they are yeah yeah they freak out and they panic and um yeah, they'll run away. So just be really, really aware of fireworks. So maybe you need a sitter um, to come and sit your dog while you're out for New Year's Eve partying. Yeah. Yeah, we're not offering. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll be out partying. We're booked out. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it is, uh, but it is one of those things. You gotta, When you're looking at a sitter, there's a few things to really like consider to look, f to look for, aren't there? Like, you yeah. Because, I mean, you can... There's, there's, you can go on Facebook and find anyone, go on Bondi Local Loop and some, you know, 13 year old girl will go, yeah, yeah, I'm free. That's great. But my dog's a little bit crazy. It's probably not, yeah. probably not best to put it in your hands. So if it is a dog with, you know, more needs or as you said, aggressive or human aggressive, reactive. So special needs, it's fine. Uh, special needs. <laughs> um, you know, you need to consider getting someone who is qualified, um, who's a trainer, a behaviorist, um, reliable, yeah. check their, um, you know, Facebook and, uh, Google for reviews as well. Um, also check they have insurance. I think that's the biggest one because mm. 
you're putting your dog in someone else's hands. So if they don't know what they're doing and something goes wrong, that's not going to go down well. So, you know, make sure if it is a dog reactive dog, they're not taking it to the dog park and yeah. <laughs> letting it run free. You know, they need to understand body language and dog psychology. And Ideally, your dog's body language. Yeah. 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 You know, um, the other thing is like, make sure they're compliant. As in, like, when you ask them to do something, they're not just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll be fine. Yeah. Because, I mean, we've, we've seen dogs uh, in the past that have gone off to boarding and, you know, they're aggressive and they've just been thrown in the deep end and we've definitely got more work to do when we get back than before you left. Uh, we've seen dogs that need their meds and people have refused to give them and the dog is then in a whole world of pain. Yeah. Because it's just gone cold turkey with no meds because they didn't believe in it. Like, come on, mate, you can look after a dog better than that. Um, it's it's just, yeah, be compliant and with what you ask of them. Um, if if they're not insured, check if your insurance, your pet insurance yeah. covers it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not rocky science. <laughs> it's yeah. really not. Um, you've just got to be a little bit diligent. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the truth is that if a, if an a, accidents happen and if they do, yeah. they're not cheap. No, so cover your ass. And also, if you're looking for someone as well, sometimes cheapest or free isn't the best. No, it might cost you a lot in the long run. Yeah, exactly. So if they are cheap, then and something happens, it's going to cost you a hell of a lot later down the track. Whereas if you know you get someone who's qualified or and who knows what they're doing, and you have to pay a little bit more, that's going to save you in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, and that's it. Like, yeah, there are people out there that work out whether your dog uh, is going to be, because it is stressful when you're not there. So work out which is going to affect them less. Does it? Are they more comfortable with somebody coming into your home and and looking after the dog, or is that going to cause more stress um, and negative associations of people in that environment, specific environment? Is your com dog comfortable in a kennel? Is your dog comfortable at? Uh, a homestay is your com dog comfortable at uh, say like one of these boarding places which is a bit more free reign figure it out um and but do what's right for your dog um yeah. do a bit of homework there's some really good ones out there yeah and also contact us we know heaps of sitters out there and we can refer heaps of companies to you as well um you know, there's, there's a lot around Sydney and, you know, we trust a lot of other people in the area that we know that do a, a good job. Yeah. For next year, because everybody will be fully booked by now. <laughs> Don't contact us for this year. You might, I mean, you may be lucky, but. <laughs> I mean, I'm, not, I'm not kidding though. Like by the time this, so, um, this comes out, this comes out we, um, that everybody will be fully booked. Um, yeah. so you should, have, you should have got there earlier, um, but we'll help you for next year because yeah. we don't want to field, a, I don't, I'm being honest, I don't want to field a load of emails, um, going, can you find me a, a, a sitter for in a week's time or two weeks time? Yeah. No, mate. Um, not a chance. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're fully booked. <laughs> no, what is? <laughs> um, no, that's it. And, uh, like we say, get a puppy, be sensible though. No, I mean, we're, it's a, we're talking about it as a over Christmas um, very deliberately because it is a time where people go out on a whim and make uh, rash decisions um, where they should have bought a pair of Ugg boots instead. Thanks, Trace. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it is something that you should really be, all of this, all of this stuff, you've got to be considering anyway when you get a dog in. It's just a probably good opportunity to chat about it, won't it? Yeah, so that's about it for our Christmas episode. Um, we hope you like our jumpers. Uh, comment on them. Whose is better? Obviously mine. Who wore it best? <laughs> Who wore it best? <laughs> Me. Um, <laughs> you're not even on camera. Oh. I'm deliberately not turning it back Flick to it you. to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that you can control that. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I do, though. So, <laughs> that's it, guys. <laughs> that's the way it's going to stay. So, yeah. thank you so much for listening today, guys. Um, it has been a pleasure as always uh leave your comments in the section below leave us questions do not contact us for boarding over christmas <laughs> and uh, remember folks for 2020 you can yeah exactly yep. that's it remember folks uh healthy dogs a happy dog <gasps> Woo. and that was the podcast